And lastly, we have a psychrometrics question. I'm struggling to figure out how to arrive at the appropriate supplier temperature. The solution indicates the SHR, sensible heat ratio, is plotted along with the reheat process line and they intersect at 62. Can you demonstrate what this should look like? I've tried backing into the answer through sensible and latent heat calculations, and I'm off by about 10% when solving through that method. So <clears throat> the written answer to this one from the source doesn't draw a picture. Just to, uh, so I, it's like, it just tells you that there's, the, there's these lines and it should intersect at 62. And, you know, if, if you know that, then everything else should follow from that. But it's not really much of an explanation at all. So let's read the question. A room is maintained at 75 dry bulb and 50% RH. The room sensible heat ratio is 0.66, which corresponds to an apparatus dew point or ADP of 38. The air conditioning unit discharge air temperature is 51 dry bulb, 51 wet bulb. If 10,000 CFM is needed to satisfy the design room cooling load, the reheat required at design conditions is most nearly what? So <clears throat> I drew this on the psychrometric chart uh, ahead of time. So this drawing on the bottom is mine in an attempt to sort of capture the given information and an attempt at graphically solving for what I believe they're trying to describe in the written solution. So the room condition we can find by going to 70 degrees and up to 50%. So this point here represents the room condition. And then there's this room sensible heat ratio of 0.66. Now you can screw around with the protractor and draw that line, right? And then try to draw a parallel line, but you're gonna drive yourself nuts. The best way to do this is to use the ADP. So they've told you in the problem statement in parentheses that the apparatus dew point that corresponds to that RSHR is 38. So that's over specifying the problem, right? You can use either one of those pieces of information. They communicate the same thing. The 0.66 tells you the slope, which you could transpose from the protractor, not pictured here, and try to get it onto the psychrometric chart. Or you could draw the same line by plotting the point on the saturation curve at 38 degrees and connecting the dots. I'm taking option two, because it's just a lot easier. Now I drew these really big wide lines, not just to make it easier for them to see, but because I wanted to kind of capture the fact that it can be hard to be precise in these problems. So sometimes I don't want us to get so lost in trying to be ultra precise about drawing these pencil thin lines and just say, let's put it in the ballpark and let's make sure we're getting the concepts first and foremost. And then we can sharpen our pencil later and try to make sure we're getting the exact intersection point. All right, so the slope of that blue line is representative of the sensible heat ratio, fine. Now, how do we actually condition the air to satisfy this room? Stepping back before I talk about the red lines, <clears throat> fundamentally, when we wanna do air conditioning, we, we have some choices. One option is we can make air that is on that line. Actually, we have to make air that's on that line. It's a matter of how we do that. So let's suppose, for instance, you wanted to make 38 degrees, degree supply air. That's probably impractical for a number of reasons. One reason is you'd have to make, uh, you'd have to have 38 degree or colder chilled water at your disposal to flow through a coil in order to do that. So that's oftentimes not available. Most operations don't run like that. Although maybe you're not using a chilled water system, maybe you're using um, a refrigerant based system, in which case you can run it much colder and maybe you could make 38 degrees supply air. Um, is that really necessary? Probably not. Is that practical? <clears throat> Arguably not because if you're discharging that very cold supply air into the space, it's gonna be uncomfortable uh, until it mixes. So it's better to supply conditioned air at somewhere between 55 and 65 degrees, usually depending on the load for just for thermal comfort. If there's humans involved, this problem doesn't specifically say that this is for human comfort. So we don't really know, but, um, anyway, if we just wanted to supply air somewhere along this line, we could do that. Um, but the problem statement tells us that the air conditioning unit discharge air temp is 52 degrees dry bulb and 51 degrees wet bulb. 
Okay, interesting. So now we go and find that point, 51 degrees, oh, sorry, 52 degrees dry bulb and 51 wet bulb, that's approximately here. <clears throat> now, if we were to distribute that air to the space, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Why? Because that point is not on the blue line. So if we were to draw a line connecting this point, the cooling coil discharge condition to the room condition, its slope would not be the same as the room sensible heat ratio. It would be something greater than 0.66. It would be something that's a bit flatter, which means that the amount of uh, latent that's happening as compared to there's there's less, if it's flatter, there's less latent per how much sensible. In other words, it's too flat. It's not enough dehumidification. So what we do instead is we use reheat. And that's one technique. That's not always the way it's done. Sometimes we do some, like, again, I want to go back to what I said originally, we could make 38 degrees supply air. We could do some um, bypass mixing to work our way up the line. So that way we don't have to have reheat or we could use reheat. And when we use reheat, we can start at a location that's left of the room sensible heat ratio line. And we can literally just heat it without adding or removing any moisture whatsoever. And in so doing, we move horizontally to the right until we hit the sensible heat ratio line, which is defined by the load, right? When they say this is 0.66 room sensible heat ratio, that's a function of what's actually happening in the room. There's a certain amount of heating happening. There's a certain amount of humidification. That's load that the air conditioning system exists to respond to the load that's in the space. So we don't get to have a say over what the blue line looks like. All we can do as engineers is come along and design something that satisfies and works, you know, to condition the space according to the way the blue line is. That's our given. That's our problem statement. Okay, so we're we're going from the discharge condition to the room sensible heat ratio line until it intersects. And that part of the line, just from here to there, is the reheat process. And the solution to this problem is to cal what are we trying to calculate? The cooling load. If 10,000 CFM is needed to design the room cooling load, the reheat required is what? So we're going to use 1.08 CFM delta T, where we know the CFM, and the delta T is going from 52 degrees to this intersection point. And if we solve it graphically with these big wide lines that I drew, you might not agree that that intersection is at 62. I drew the red line all the way to 62, but that's because I looked at the at the solution as I was working on this. You might argue that it's like looks more like it's 61. Now, maybe I didn't draw it perfectly. So I want to give some uh, comfort <laughs> that, um, you know, it's easy to be off by 10%. You did it in a more analytical way, kind of using the CFM and the humidity ratio and tried to quote unquote back into the answer and got within 10%. 10%, that, that may be as well as we're going to do on a graphical solution as well. But the most important thing for me is to make sure that you come away with the concept uh, of the room sensible heat ratio line being a function of the load and nothing else, and the reheat line being this horizontal sensible uh, line from the cooling coil discharge condition until it intersects with the SHR line. And you just do the best you can. And if it's within 10%, you know, maybe we'll take it. Well, the 10% the off, I think I was like right in between C and D answers. So it was like oh. not workable. Yeah. I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of fuzzy on the relationship between the ADP and the <laughs> room load. The like fact I, that they yeah I, the the fact that they're giving you the ADP is just another way of communicating the same thing. Like apparatus dew point when I first saw that 
in similar problems, I always want to assume it's literal. Like I'm thinking that this is the ADP because <laughs> that's like the cooling coil discharge condition. But the right. ADP is more of a theoretical idea in this problem statement in that it's the point where the room sensible heat ratio line of the exact slope would eventually go to on it the saturation would be the, curve. It would be the coldest you could get that air. Like if you slowed the air down, like, you know, if it's designed for 10,000 CFM and you just cut that in half, that would be the, the temperature that would approach. Well, I don't know. No. I mean, no, I think, I think it's the temperature of, of a hundred percent RH or um, 38 degree dry bulb, wet bulb and dew point, right? If you wanted to yeah. supply air directly off the saturation curve, this is the point that you'd have to start at in order to not have reheat or bypass. Okay. You could supply 38 degree, 100% saturated air and satisfy this room. But that's largely impractical. Okay. So instead- right. We do less cooling. Let's talk about, it's not really required to solve this problem, but I think it, maybe this will be helpful just to take a little bit of a step back. I'll pull up my whiteboard. Let's draw the air conditioning process, right? Because we drew the reheat process. So we've already, the air's already gone over the cooling coil. Well, let's draw the air conditioning process. If we start here, Right, because imagine you were taking return air from that room and bringing it into the air handler. We go horizontally to the right, because that's all we can ever do when we cool. Right, we can't actually remove moisture from the air until we bring it all the way to the dew point. Then and only then do we start to remove moisture from it. So we cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it. It's all sensible until it reaches the dew point, and then it has no choice but to give up some moisture and slide down the saturation curve. And it slides down to this location here. Or maybe it slides down a bit further, but then there's a little bit of bypass because no coil is perfect. So instead of getting 51 degree saturated air on the discharge of that coil, instead we're getting 52 degree 51 wet bulb. So it's not quite saturated, but it's 90% humidity. That's very typical for real air conditioning systems where you're getting almost saturated air off the coil, but maybe not 100%. And a lot of problems will assume that it's saturated for the sake of simplicity. And that's not a crazy thing to assume, but in a lot of cases, it's more like nearly saturated, but not quite. So that's, that's the air conditioning process after it leaves the room you know, gets captured in the returns and brought back to the to the cooling equipment. And then um, that's all happening via the cooling coil and moisture is being removed. And we get to this location here. And in an ideal world, we would love to just discharge that air to the space for the purpose of cooling. But if we did, what would happen? We would be playing to this line that wants to disappear on me. And that's not the right slope. We need to be on that blue line. If we were to be on that new green line, it's too flat. There's not enough latent. There's, there's the right amount of sensible. We're going from 51, 52 up to the, uh, whatever it is, 75 degrees. But we're not removing enough moisture. So we got to get that starting point somewhere onto the blue line. And that's why... We use reheat. I'm not a big fan of reheat personally. I think a better strategy for efficiency purposes is to just bypass half of the air. So you take half the air, run it over a cold coil, and then you take the other half of the air and do nothing with it. <laughs> so you're one part, you're cooling it twice as much as you need to and drying it a whole bunch. And the other air, you're, you're doing absolutely nothing. And then you mix the two streams together. And... Uh, you can end up on the blue line, no matter what you're designing for, you can figure out a way to use dampers and um, 
you can play around with the temperature of the one that you're cooling on, make it colder if you want to do more dehumidification. And you can play around with how much volume goes through each path to try to make sure that you're satisfying the psychrometric requirements for that particular application, aka landing yourself on the blue line. I don't know if that helped or if that just added more confusion. No, that helped. Okay, cool. I'm glad. <laughs>